What if I could show you that it's 50 times more expensive to try and stop climate change than it is to adapt to climate change as and if it happens? It's 50 to 1. And I'll prove it using data that's accepted by the IPCC, provide all my references along the way, and we'll even have time to hear from a few scientists, researchers, economists, and investigative journalists that the mainstream media haven't told you about. You ready? Carbon taxes and emissions trading schemes are supposed to reduce CO2 emissions to reduce climate change. But despite lots of talk all over the world, atmospheric CO2 continues to rise and the IPCC predict 3 degrees Celsius of warming by the end of this century. But never fear, Australia is here. Despite a lack of action elsewhere in the world, the land down under stepped up in 2012 and introduced the most ambitious and expensive carbon tax anywhere in the world. It's been estimated that it cut their CO2 emissions by 5%, which given that Australia's emissions are 1.2% of the global total, the scheme would have reduced global CO2 emissions by 0.06%. What that means is that instead of atmospheric CO2 rising to 410 parts per million by the end of the decade, it would rise to a mere 409.988 parts per million which isn't a particularly useful number, but if we calculate the resulting cut to climatic CO2 forcing, which, as you know in this case, is 5.35 times the logarithm of 410 divided by 409.988, or 0 0.00016 watts per square metre, obviously, and then multiply that by the 10-year climate sensitivity parameter, 0.33 of a watt per square metre, we finally know how many degrees the Australian carbon tax would have saved after 10 years. 0 0.00005 degrees Celsius, one twenty thousandth of a degree. Now the smallest global temperature change we can reliably detect is one twentieth of a degree. So even if the Australian carbon tax had worked as advertised, the temperature change after 10 years would have been 1,000 times smaller than what we can measure. Now this is a problem that affects every carbon emissions reduction scheme ever invented. Mark Morano, former journalist and editor of ClimateDepot.com, said it best. Because not a single proposal they've ever done would have any detectable impact on global warming using their science. So after 10 years, the Australian tax would have changed the global temperature by one twenty thousandth of one degree. But that's not all. That twenty thousandth of a degree would have come at a cost of $160 billion. Which means if we theoretically expanded the Australian scheme internationally and made it big enough to save a full degree of warming, it would cost $3.2 quadrillion dollars for one degree. Ouch! So many millions of dollars are wasted and people have worked hard to pay their taxes and to see the government just pouring them down the sink. I think what we need to do is look at the money. This is all about money. So how much is $3.2 quadrillion dollars? Well, a column of 3.2 quadrillion Australian $1 coins would go from Earth around the furthest planet in the solar system. No, Pluto, we've been through this. You're not a planet anymore. And back again, via the Sun, with 600 million in loose change, and would weigh as much as 72 million fully laden 747s. With 3.2 quadrillion dollars, you could spend a million dollars every day for the next eight and a half million years, and still be richer than Bill Gates. It's a lot of money, and all of that needs to be spent to save one degree Celsius. Uh, you can take so-called action and do all manner of harm. I mean, uh, and, and uh, that, of course, is not part of the calculation because um, uh, you have to talk about cost benefits in all directions, not mm -hmm. just one direction. Let's bring this back to Earth, shall we? Predicted global warming for the next decade is 0.17 of a degree. Just to stop that 0.17, we would need to spend $540 trillion. That's $77,000 for every man, woman or child on Earth. It's 80% of the entire planet's GDP. That means effectively that we would have to cut average economic activity and therefore the average standard of living to one-fifth of what it is worldwide just to ensure that it doesn't get a little bit warmer this decade. Surely there are better things to do with our money. We could have improved our lives. We could have improved the lives of others in countless ways with that same money and effort. And here we are wasting it. The greatest thing you can have 
for rising seas, for extreme weather, for hurricanes and storms and tsunamis is wealth. Wealth to invest in infrastructure, wealth to invest in dams, wealth to invest in all sorts of uh, storm mitigation efforts. And that is what they're denying the developing world. So stopping climate change using carbon taxes and trading schemes will cost about 80% of global GDP. But that's only half the equation. Remember I said that I would show that it's 50 times more expensive to try and stop climate change than it is to adapt to it as and if it happens? Well, what is the cost of adapting to climate change? Many people say that carbon taxes and trading schemes are like taking out an insurance policy. It's worth spending the money just in case, right? Better safe than sorry? We need to know what climate change might cost us if we don't stop it. Thankfully, we have the answer in the 2006 Stern Report on Climate Economics. It concludes that if the planet warms by 3 degrees this century, it would cause damage of 0 to 3% of GDP. So, climate change will cost us roughly 1.5% of global GDP if we simply adapt to it as required, or 80% of GDP if we try and stop it. 50 to 1. That sounds like a bad deal to me. And this idea that we should do it because it's insurance, that comes up all the time. It's just crazy. If you had a $50,000 car and someone said the insurance for it for a year was going to cost you $50,000, mm. you would be barking mad to say yes, please. Would you buy an insurance policy on your home that was cost more than the house is worth and that would pay out nothing if, if your house burned down? That's the snake oil they're selling us. The Australian carbon tax in its original form set the highest price per tonne of CO2 anywhere in the world by a long shot. But even then, the price wasn't high enough to make a measurable difference to the temperature. Now, after only a year, they've slashed the carbon price to reduce the cost of the scheme, but cutting the price makes the scheme even less effective. So the cost-to-benefit ratio remains immeasurable. Well, it means it's a tremendous waste, of, not only of effort, but of money and resources. It is not addressing the right problems. We're smart, we're ingenious, we are creative, and we will solve the problems that come our way, and so will our children and grandchildren. The numbers don't lie. This so-called insurance of the Australian carbon scheme was 50 times more expensive than the cost of adapting to climate change as and if it happens. 50 to 1. And the revised Australian scheme, as well as the European Emissions Trading Scheme, the now defunct Chicago scheme, and any other schemes our politicians might dream up in the future, will all suffer the same basic flaw. If they are expensive enough to be effective, they aren't going to be affordable. And if they're affordable, they aren't going to be effective. So, what should we do? I just think we need to stop being so worried and just take a pragmatic approach to increasing efficiency, improving our energy production, and going down different pathways for energy production and we'll get to where people say we should be without having to tax people and without having to change our lifestyles in a negative way. Pretending we can stop climate change is a waste of time, money and opportunity and may actually be doing more harm than good. You can see the maths behind the 50 to 1 project as well as extended interviews with all the people you've seen in this video at 50 to onenet My name's Topher and this is the 50 to 1 project. Stop being afraid. I think that's the most important, single most important thing. Stop being afraid and start thinking. Okay.